my name is Heidi and I'm so excited to have you with me for another daily discovery with FC Mod. Today we're going to be diving into some food science and investigating this guy. Yep, that's right, a piece of bread. Now, bread seems kind of plain and ordinary, but there's actually some really cool food science that goes on inside the bread process. So let's start by just observing this piece of bread. What do you notice? I'm noticing what shape it is. Does anyone know? It's kind of a square. I'm also noticing the texture. It's kind of squishy. And I'm noticing something really interesting. Do you see all of these holes in the slice of bread? Can anyone make a hypothesis why they're there? What might have caused them? I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. These holes are caused by yeast. What is yeast? Yeast is a tiny microorganism, so small we can't see it with our eyes. We need something like a microscope to help us out. And yeast is a living organism, just like plants and humans and animals, yeast is alive and it needs three things to thrive. Food, warmth, and moisture. And all those three things can be found in bread dough. Bakers add flour to bread dough, that's the yeast food. They add water to bread dough, moisture, and they put their bread dough in a warm location, like a countertop. And there's that third ingredient, warmth. And with those three things, that yeast in the bread dough can thrive. What do I mean by that? Well, that yeast can come alive even more and start eating and growing. But what happens? Let me tell you about something else that yeast and humans have in common. Not only are we both alive, but we both produce carbon dioxide. Just like we breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide, yeast turns its food into carbon dioxide. Now, it doesn't have lungs like us, but in a way it sort of exhales that carbon dioxide. If you've ever made bread, you've seen this happen. You know the part in the bread making process where you have to leave it on the counter for what seems like a really, really long time? Well, the yeast is actually doing something. It's eating that food and producing carbon dioxide. But what happens to that carbon dioxide? It can't go anywhere. It's actually trapped inside of the bread by gluten in the bread dough. And so instead, it grows and forms these air bubbles that later, be when they're baked, form the holes in our bread. Don't believe me? Well, let's try an experiment to see bre uh, yeast breathing for ourselves. For this experiment, I'm going to be using a bottle with some warm water in it a balloon, a package of yeast, and some sugar. If you have these materials in your home, you can pause the video right now, go gather them up so we can do this experiment together. If not, that is perfectly okay. You just sit back and we can watch this experiment unfold together. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that water in my bottle is warm. Does anyone remember the three things that yeast needs to thrive? If you said food, warmth, and moisture, great job. So what purpose is this warm water serving? Well, it's actually serving two purposes. It's moisture and warmth. So I'm gonna add our yeast to the water. I'm gonna mix, mix, mix it around. It's gonna get a little cloudy. Next, I'm gonna add a little bit of that sugar. Does anyone know what the sugar might be? Food! Swish it around. So we just fed our yeast with that sugar. And then I'm gonna put a balloon over the top. Ta-da! Now, if you did this in your house, you need to put this balloon and bottle in a warm place for about 15 to 20 minutes. I'm gonna put it over here. 
so you can all keep an eye on it. Now, while that balloon is blown up by that yeast, eating that sugar, producing that carbon dioxide, I want us to think about something. Today, we used packaged yeast, but what about people who lived hundreds and thousands of years ago that couldn't go to the grocery store and buy yeast? I want to show you something. Do you see this? This is called sourdough starter, and using this, humans have been making bread for hundreds and thousands of years. My sourdough starter is only a couple months old. We made it when we couldn't find yeast in the stores, but some sourdough starters are hundreds of years old, passed down from family to family. But what is this sourdough starter? What do you notice about it? What color is it? texture is it? To help explain what this sourdough starter is, I want to tell you another cool fact about yeast. Yeast is around us all the time. It lives in the air we breathe, and most of the time it's perfectly harmless. So what happened is I put flour and water on the counter. Remember, food, warmth, and moisture. And the wild yeast in the air said, that's a place I might like to live. So it moved in and it started eating that food and producing carbon dioxide and growing. I kind of captured wild yeast in my sourdough jar. Now, packaged yeast is kind of in hibernation. Warm water helps it wake up, but wild yeast is always alive. My sourdough starter is kind of like a little pet. I have to feed it flour every couple of days. But using this sourdough starter, I can make bread anytime, even if I don't have packaged yeast. It's alive. And that's how humans have made bread for thousands of years. Now you might be thinking, oh, isn't it sour? Not necessarily. It's a name we came up with to describe the bread made from the starter, but it doesn't have to be sour. It's just the name for naturally grown yeast. Pretty cool, right? All right, have you guys been keeping your eye on our balloon and yeast experiment? What's been happening? Let's check it out. Whoa, would you look at that? What do we notice? It looks like that yeast has been growing. It's been eating that sugar, that food we gave it, and expanding. It's been releasing CO2, and that's blown up our balloon. So from this, we can learn that yeast is alive. Pretty crazy, right? So what all have we learned today? We've learned that yeast is a living organism and needs three things to survive. Food, moisture, and warmth. We've learned that it produces carbon dioxide, and that helps create these air pockets that helps our bread rise and be fluffy and delicious. We've also learned that yeast is in the air all around us all the time, and you can capture it and grow yeast from sourdough. And I think all of that is some pretty cool food science. Thanks for joining me today to learn all about yeast. If you've enjoyed our time together, check out some more videos and activities on our website, www.fcmod.org forward slash programs. See you next time.